um, I've been asked to speak to you tonight about my original research. It's called the Geographic Expression of Evolutionary Knack Relative to Underlying Lyme Endemicity, or Geek Rule for short. <laughs> my overseeing institution has asked not to be recognized at this event, <laughs> and I have honored that request. So this is a talk about evolution, duh. As such, I want you all to keep one key concept in mind, that's selective pressure. Selective pressure is one of the key components that makes evolution tick. Um, and what I'm going to show you in the next few minutes is how Lyme disease actually leads to evolution of people well-suited to an advanced technological economy. <laughs> Don't laugh. It's, it's, it's serious. So first, some background. You guys have all heard about Lyme disease. Many of you guys may have had it. Um, we basically invented it right around here. <laughs> Woo, Lyme, yeah. No, but seriously, Lyme, Connecticut's like three hours down Route 95. So if you really want to see the birthplace of Lyme disease, you can go do that. But um, it, it's a big deal around here. It's the most prevalent tick-borne illness in the U.S. There's about 20 to 40,000 cases per year. So think about a bad flu season. It's equivalent to that every year. The causative agent is a spirochete, this little green squiggly thing you see up there, called Borrelia burgdorferi. Um, and it's transmitted by Ixodes scapularis, which is a deer tick you guys all know and love. And um, sort of the pathognomonic sign for Lyme disease is that self-explanatory target lesion you see up there. That's, when you see that rash in a doctor's office, you say Lyme disease. You're done. It's easy. What a lot of people don't know, though, is how bad Lyme can get if it's not treated in a reasonable time period. There's a lot of bad effects associated with end-stage Lyme, everything from ningoencephalitis to facial palsy to heart block to septic arthritis. Speaking from the standpoint of evolution, all these conditions reduce your reproductive fitness, and as a result, you want to avoid Lyme disease. This guy here, for example, he has Bell's palsy, or facial palsy. The left side of his face is completely paralyzed. He can't wrinkle his forehead on his left side, he can't close his eye on his left side, and he can't really keep his mouth shut on his left side either, so he's going to be drooling. So I'm sure he's a nice guy, but he's not going on a date anytime soon. His genes aren't getting propagated anywhere. And when it comes to evolution, propagating your genes is what it's all about. So if you want to spread your genes, you want to avoid Lyme disease. How do you avoid Lyme? Well, the simple answer is you stay indoors, away from all those nasty ticks, right? <laughs> so it follows that Lyme disease applies selective pressure to stay indoors. That's not the only way that Lyme applies selective pressure, though. As it turns out, the mainstay treatment for people of sexual maturity um, who have Lyme is a drug doxycycline. Doxy has the unfortunate side effect of causing extreme photosensitivity. So if, evolutionarily speaking, you're unfit slash stupid enough to go outside and get Lyme, <laughs> and then you're unfit slash stupid enough to go outside while you're taking doxycycline for Lyme, you end up looking like this. Or like that. And again, no offense intended, but these folks aren't going on dates anytime soon. <laughs> Their genes aren't getting spread. So again, the net effect of all this is a strong selective pressure from Lyme pushing people indoors. But here's where it gets interesting. <laughs> In addition to staying away from Lyme, one the, there's a lot of other benefits of staying indoors. You read more, you spend more time around computers, you learn more, you increase your knowledge. And in general, more knowledge leads to more success, higher status, higher wealth. So the end result of all this, selective pressure at work from Lyme, is that you get an adaptive phenotype. These are people who have adapted well to areas where Lyme is endemic. So these are people who are confined to indoor environments. They're pale, because they're not out in the sun. <laughs> they're well-educated, and they're good with technology. In short, they're geeks. And so it follows that geeks are exactly who we expect to see thriving in Lyme endemic areas. And what's more, people who spend more time indoors tend to mingle more with other indoor-centric people. So a couple pairings result, and the end effect of geeks baiting with geeks is more geeks. <laughs> now, that's a big-time evolutionary win. And why is it happening? Because of Lyme disease. <laughs> and one more thing. This is just the icing on top of the cake here. Remember our friend doxycycline. This is the mainstay treatment for Lyme. Well, it turns out that doxy gives a little bump in evolutionary advantage to our geeks. Um, the reason is that doxycycline hastens the metabolism of oral, oral contraceptives. That's true. This leads, on average, to more offspring from geek pairings in Lyme endemic areas. Now, this advantage is especially important to geek populations, because remember, in general, the overall frequency of sexual encounters in this population is 
I don't know. <laughs> so you want some data? Here's some data. This map you see here is actually put out by the American Lyme Disease Foundation. It shows a distribution of the relative commonness of infected ticks in the lower 48. I'll point out the notable concentrations in the Northeast, especially around here, and in Northern California. So you ask yourself, what do these places have in common? They've got institutions of higher learning, just like where we are today. They have booming tech sectors. And what's fueling all this? It's our adaptive phenotype people. It's our geeks. This is exactly what you expect to see in Lyme endemic areas. So you're reading the paper about places like Seattle, Washington, Austin, Texas. They're concerned because Lyme disease rates are going up in their cities. They should not be concerned. They should be psyched. <laughs> you want to boot? <laughs> If you want a booming tech sector, you need geeks. If you want geeks, you need Lyme disease. <laughs> That's a geek rule. Thank you very much.